Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and it's Thursday, October 12th. Tesla has announced that it is raising wages at Gigafactory at Berlin amidst a new unionization effort at the factory. The union in the area, called IG Metall and Tesla, have been sparring in the media, with the former claiming bad working conditions and the latter claiming that the union is exaggerating the situation. Earlier this week, the union claimed that 1,000 Tesla workers joined in an effort to ask for better working conditions. And now Tesla has told the local German media that they are raising salaries at Berlin next month. Now Tesla said that they increased salaries by 6% last year and plans to reveal the next raise to employees this November. Tesla also said that this new raise is part of a normal process and it is not a response to the unionization effort. Tesla has officially released its API documentation to support third-party apps. The automaker has talked on and off about releasing a software development kit to create a third-party app ecosystem operating inside the vehicles. And until now, Tesla has only offered an unofficial API that doesn't go much past the basics. The automaker has now officially released API documentation, making an important step towards creating a healthier third-party app community. So far, it only covers the command that you can send to the car through the Tesla app, and it can ping the data from your car that goes to the app itself. Now, in the near future, your favorite apps may have changes and new terms coming your way in the form of a new service notification. A Tesla Cybertruck stainless steel supplier has been revealed. Otto Kumpu is going to provide steel for the novel electric pickup truck. One of the Cybertruck's biggest differentiating features is the fact that Tesla plans to build it with a body and what they're calling an exoskeleton made of ultra-hard stainless steel. Now, the automaker said that it plans to develop its own ally for this, and now we know one supplier. Bloomberg reports that Tesla selected a Finnish supplier called Autokumpu Oij. The report also states that Tesla may use more than one supplier. Tesla has potentially 2 million reservations for the truck, which is expected to go into production in the coming weeks. Okay, and here is some smaller news. Kelly Blue Book released its new vehicle average transaction price report, and it shows that the average price paid for an electric vehicle in September was $50,683. That's down from more than $65,000 just a year ago. Tesla also has some more price cuts for the leasing price of the Model 3 and Y, down by $90 and $100 a month, respectively. And finally, Tesla's Summon feature, which enables the car to move remotely for short distances without anyone inside, this feature was able to save an owner who got locked out from a parking garage. The owner left the car in the garage after hours, and the gate would only open the next morning unless someone was leaving the garage. And in this case, there was no one inside the car. He triggered it to move forward and open up the gate. So, pretty cool. Honda and Mitsubishi Corporation are teaming up to help EV owners get the most out of their vehicles and batteries. The venture plans to deploy an advanced battery monitoring system to manage and enhance the value of each battery through the lifetime, from powering EVs to using them as stationary energy storage. By reusing battery materials, Honda says that they will help reduce the total cost of ownership for EV owners. Now, this is an interesting development from two companies that otherwise lag in electric vehicle offerings. The latest quarterly EV sales estimates from Cox Automotive has been released, showing a record 313 and 86 electric cars sold in the U.S. from July to September. Electric vehicles accounted for 7.9% of total U.S. sales in the third quarter. This is up 6.1% from a year ago and from 7.2% in the previous quarter. Having 14 new vehicles come out in the year, and according to Cox Automotive, the EV prices are down 22% over last year. Both of these contributed heavily to the growth. Although Tesla continues its dominant expansion, delivering over 435,000 cars in the third quarter, their market share for the larger pie is slipping. Tesla's market share hit 50% in the third quarter, down 62% from the first quarter, its lowest so far. Now, the highly anticipated Cybertruck could turn things around, but the competition is still picking up. At Electrek, we expect that about half of Cybertruck reservation holders will instead individually import the Isuzu electric truck from overseas. Yes, that was a joke. <laughs> gotcha. 
Following EV battery agreements with CATL and EVE Energy last fall, BMW has now added S-Volt Energy to its Rolodex, according to a new report. The battery developer is a spin-off of China's Great Wall Motor and will begin supplying BMW with battery cells beginning in 2027. CNEV Post also reported that new orders are in for nearly 90 gigawatt hours. Now, neither S-Volt or BMW have confirmed the agreement yet, so details are still unclear, such as what sort of battery chemistry will be employed. In today's community comment found on YouTube, Eric Schmidt 5082 says, Aptera's current factory YouTube channel videos show nothing encouraging. If you have ever been in real automotive plants, Toyota, Honda, or GM, I have, it is easy to see how far away Aptera is. If they ever build real production vehicles with real production staff is years away if the money holds out. Their current production plant and equipment are not even close to real automotive production. Aptera is just a lot of ongoing hype, big smiles, and maybe a few hand-built prototypes to keep people interested. Prototyping and real automotive production are very different. Well, Eric, there's certainly a lot of smiles to go around. That's certainly true. Aptera is fighting an uphill battle to reach production, and it seems that the game is set on hard mode for that team. Other solar companies like Sono Motors and Lightyear have already gone under, and now it's Aptera who is running the solar electric vehicle flag. As evidenced by their crowdfunding campaign, they are certainly strapped for cash, and I imagine that they are running pretty lean, or they'd better. They may run out of money before reaching profitability, which itself is years away from meaningful production, which itself is a ways out from any production, which itself has not even commenced to my knowledge. But I really don't agree with the comparison to Honda, Toyota, or General Motors. These are enormous institutions with deep history of operational efficiency and economies of scale that are all incredibly large. It's actually quite silly to compare these global behemoth conglomerates to little old Aptera, a small team of about 50 people that are hand-making an auto cycle from a modest facility attempting to serve an incredibly small but also incredibly loyal customer base. Tesla started out the same way, and even to this day they are not close to making as many cars as Toyota does now. Thanks for watching Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.